This video features the best brawlers you need to be playing in August 2024 with the new season and the new brawler. Let's see how much the meta has shifted so far. Alright guys, to start off this video, the first brawler we're going to be talking about is going to be Colette. The reason why Colette is cracking the top 10 list now is because of how well she counters tanks. Brawlers like Frank, Meg, Buzz, and Buster are great brawlers that Colette can counter quite well. Since her damage is amplified, the more health her opponents have, it makes her the ultimate tank counter. Now something that increases Colette's survivability and her annoyingness especially is her gacha gadget. This gadget is disgusting because Colette will be able to heal herself over the next 5 seconds for 80% of the damage that she deals during that time. So if Colette can use this gadget on high health brawlers or when she's about to die, it makes her basically unkillable if you don't have the DPS to take her down instantly. But let's be real here, one of the more annoying things about Colette's entire kit is her super. Being able to charge up a fourth of your next super when you hit the enemies is crazy in itself. If you are running the push's star power, you can guarantee yourself half of your next super by just supering one enemy. This helps Colette chain super like crazy if she can connect onto multiple opponents, helping her team wipe no problem. But to just add fuel to the fire scent that makes her even more annoying is her hypercharged teen spirit. Now with her hypercharge, she has her spirit following her during her dash that can also damage enemies. Essentially it's like another Colette super that can help her deal more damage and charge up her super even faster. This helps Colette deal massive amounts of damage to her opponents or what makes her shine in her best game mode heist. Alright guys, the next brawler we're going to be talking about is going to be Angelo. Now Angelo is still considered to be one of the strongest sharpshooters in the game. His ability to instantly deal 4000 damage is enough to cause the enemies to immediately retreat because dealing that much damage in one shot is no joke. Also with his ability to hover above water makes him extremely versatile on any map that has even the slightest bit of water. He can use that to escape danger from far range brawlers and also to cause pressure against enemies that are short ranged. But of course to amplify his damage even more is using his super. When standing in his poison cloud the longer you are aiming down the site the more poison damage you can do over the next 3 seconds right? But if you are running the empower star power too, this is another reason why you need to be standing in that poison cloud. So running empower and being able to heal while aiming down your arrow to deal more damage will hopefully keep your health up and help you stay alive. Now something that makes Angelo even better and I'm glad that they buffed it is his hypercharge that he has. When activated, Angelo's poison cloud moves with him. I love this hypercharge for Angelo, it definitely makes him more mobile, he can also heal up when he's moving around with this super and that just makes him that much more deadlier. Alright guys, the next brawler we're going to be talking about is going to be Rico. Now the main reason why Rico is such a good brawler right now is because of his new hypercharge. When activated, projectiles from Rico's super bounce much further than usual. This is basically a knockoff version of Rico's mutation, but it is still going to be very good to shut down lanes and just be extremely annoying to deal with on maps with lots of walls. Now realistically, Rico's been a pretty decent brawler for such a long time but now he's just that much better. If you think about it, Rico has always been good on maps like Split, Hard Rock Mine, and other maps, but now with this Hypercharge, he can be even more viable on other maps. Also considering that the Hypercharge doesn't take that long to charge up compared to like Miko, it makes it easy to cycle up if you can hit multiple enemies with this Hypercharge. Now something that can amplify the Hypercharge even more is running Rico's star power super bouncy. This star power will make it easier to not only kill the enemies because you'll be dealing more damage to them, but you will also be able to charge up your super even faster. So make sure you are always trying to bounce your shots off of walls to kick that star power into effect whenever you can. Now something that helps Rico stand his ground in this very tanky and aggressive meta is his multi-ball launcher gadget. This is a great gadget to deal lots of damage quickly to tanks, assassins, or aggressive brawlers in general. All of those bullets that get shot out will do 896 damage each and easily be able to chip down the enemies that are too close to Rico. Alright guys, the next brawler we're going to be talking about is going to be Lily. Now Lily has been that kind of brawler where most people forget about, but after her rework she is extremely broken. All they did was that they gave Lily an additional ammo slot. So now that Lily has this extra bar of ammo, she can use that to attack the enemies, deal double the amount of DPS she can usually do, which is just crazy. But even before Lily's rework, something that made her extremely irritating inside this meta is her Vanish gadget. Now one of the ways you can use this gadget is that if you notice there's a lot of damage coming your way, you can just activate your gadget and escape into the shadow room for the next couple of seconds. You can also use Vanish to hide inside of a bush and travel to wherever you need to go for the next 3 seconds and use that to get closer to the enemies. To just make facing Lily even scarier, there's just no way the enemies will know where you went if you change directions after you activate your gadget. There's a lot of different versatile ways you can use this gadget, which is why it's so strong in the game. And of course, with their spiky star power, it helps her do even more damage when she connects with her super. With the help of the spiky star power, being able to deal 50% extra damage with your next main attack just makes it so much more rewarding when you connect with your super. The more damage you can do with spiky, the faster you can charge your super, and the more backstabs with increased damage you can deal onto the enemies. It's just going to be this kind of vicious snow ball effect that can frustrate the enemies and get you some easy kills. Alright guys, the next brawler we're going to be talking about is going to be Max. 
Now, Max is easily considered to be one of the best brawlers in the game now because of her hypercharge unlimited energy. When activated, Max's next super throws an energy drink to herself and all allies regardless of whether they're in range of her super or not. All targeted allies receive a movement speed increase but will grant 25% supercharge to the allies too. Now, Max has always been a pretty good brawler but ever since she got her hypercharge, that is what it shots her up into the S tier. With this hypercharge, it's more important than ever to try to get as much valuable as possible since well for one, the hypercharge is harder to get compared to her super, but secondly, Max Max's hypercharge is way better than getting a speed boost since everybody will also be getting a supercharge increase as well. Something that the really good Max mains can really utilize with her is using her good mobility so she can move around the map and get close to those kind of squishy brawlers. If you can dodge or use obstacles around the map to get within range of the long range brawlers, you can just easily burst them down like you would with throwers. You know, most of those types of brawlers don't have a ton of health in the first place or they kind of have slower unload speeds so there's no way they can get Max down in time. Now when you're playing Max, you're trying to figure out in which kind of comps you want to push her with, I'd recommend building comps around Max's super. Special comps such as Gene Max Sandy or Max Double Tank are prime examples of where you need to try your best to cycle supers and support your teammates. It's also better to super when your team has ammo and health as it's way harder to get value when you're all low and have no ammo. Alright guys, the next brawler we're going to be talking about is going to be Barry. Now people really underestimate Barry because he is a thrower but he's extremely good and annoying to deal with. Barry is basically a better version of Barley so you want to cover as much ground as possible to stop the enemies from crossing a choke point or getting to wherever the objective is during the match. Just remember that Barry is technically considered a support brawler, so use your attacks to heal up your teammates or even use it to heal yourself and keep yourself alive. Now something that makes Barry extremely broken is the fact that he can charge his super by either healing himself or healing his teammates. No doubt, this is one of the most annoying and frustrating things about Barry. Even if Barry isn't hitting any shots onto the enemies, he can still heal his teammates and charge up his super at the same time. Like who thought that that was a good idea? Now when you get your super, if you can use it so you can travel over both of your teammates, this will help them stay alive but also help you get the most amount of value out of your super. Now one of the things that I personally love about playing Barry is using his friendship is great gadget. Like if your teammates need some immediate heals since they are about to die, using your gadget to instantly heal them for a thousand health might be a lifesaver. Of course having this gadget as a defense mechanism will hopefully keep you alive too. You can use this gadget to knock back enemies that surprise you just so you can have enough time to escape so your teammates can help you get down that enemy. Now something that makes Barry even more frustrating to deal with is his floor's fine star power. Having that increased real speed by 50% will make it easier for Barry to keep parts of the map locked down with his ice cream and help him get more kills. If you have the ammo to spare, standing on your own ice cream puddles can be a useful strategy to ensure that you are constantly getting all the buffs possible to help you win the game. Alright guys, the next brawler we're going to be talking about is going to be Gale. Now Gale is such a great brawler because he can counter any aggressive brawler in the game. Obviously tanks and assassins are extremely dangerous at close ranges, so if you can use your super so they are not within range of you anymore, then you and your teams will have the range advantage against them. Also try to use your super onto multiple enemies if you can. You want to get as much value as possible no matter who you are playing with in Brawl Stars. But when you have a super as good as Gale's, it's good to push away more than one person if you can. Now another thing that helps Gale deal with aggressive brawlers in the game is his twister gadget. Since the gadget will only work if the enemies walk into the tornado, then you want to use it as a defense mechanism to prohibit the enemies from pursuing a kill onto you. Also if you place the gadget in a place where the enemies need to cross in order to get to that objective, it will make them waste time to either wait till the gadget is done or they'll have to run around around to a different lane. But the true reason why Gale is an S tier brawler now is his hypercharged blizzard. When activated, Gale's super is 2 tiles wider and creates 2 gusts of winds and snow which pushes enemies farther away than usual. The amount of damage that they can deal helps him shred down the enemies even quicker. Can't forget about the stat buffs he gets from the hypercharge making him even stronger. Alright guys, the next brawler we're going to be talking about is going to be Meg. Now Meg is a great brawler that can be played literally anywhere. The fact that you can run into enemies faces, explode the mech and still have a chance to stay alive makes Meg extremely strong within the game. There is basically no repercussions for getting your mech destroyed because you can just run away and try to charge it up again. Now the thing that makes Meg strong in this specific meta is how well she can counter tanks. You can use her high DPS from the mech to deal heavy amounts of damage to the tanks and then use your swiping suit to do even more damage to lower the enemies down quicker. Also combined with their heavy metal star power, she can just explode the mech right in the enemies faces and deal 2400 damage instantly to help her defeat those aggressive brawlers. Now whenever you're playing mech, you obviously want to be stinging that mech as long as possible. Now if it gets destroyed, it's not the end of the world, it doesn't take mech long to chain her super back and even if you die trying to get it back, you'll respawn with the mech anyways so it's kind of a win-win with mech. Like what I was talking about earlier, 
this is something in my opinion that the devs gotta fix. I think to balance Meg out, she should not spawn in the mech because it just makes such a brainless brawler to play. Alright guys, the next brawler we're gonna be talking about is gonna be Frank. Now ever since Frank got that rework of his, it has just made him completely broken. For those of you living under a rock, Frank's main attack delay now decreases whenever his health gets lower. This has made Frank completely broken because his attack cooldown when he's about to die is basically nothing. This allows him to kill anybody in the game as long as he has the ammo for it. But something that makes Frank even scarier to deal with is when he has his power grab star power activated. Having that increased damage by 50% for the next 12 seconds will help Frank defeat enemies way faster. He can use it to scare enemies away since they don't want to take additional damage and that's easy pressure Frank can gain. Combining this with his irresistible attraction gadget makes him even better. With this gadget, he can not only double the amount of damage he does with his next main attack, which does stack with the power grab star power by the way, he can also pull the enemies closer to him if they manage to survive. And of course the cherry on top to Frank's kit is that he has the hypercharge now. Frank will be able to fire his super from all directions in a huge radius. It helps with keeping the enemies far away from him first off, but secondly it's hard for the enemies to escape its range once they are within it. Also considering that the hypercharge rate isn't extremely difficult to achieve like Miko's, it makes getting it and using it even more game breaking. Alright guys, the next brawler we're going to be talking about is going to be Clancy. Now of course the newest brawler in the game has to be one of the most broken brawlers in Brawl Stars, right? Granted Clancy in his first stage is absolute torture because he deals no damage, his projectile is so hard to hit, and he moves incredibly slow. But once you get to that third stage, man, he can go full beast mode. Now all this hype around Clancy's third stage is not about his main attack, but it's literally all the other buffs that he gets. It's crazy that he gets an increase in his movement speed and he can do 50% extra damage with his super. This turns Clancy into a killing machine that can deal with huge amounts of damage from a point blank range or if he needs to cover a large area of the map from a distance. Well there you guys go with the best brawlers for August 2024, I really recommend maxing out and getting all of these brawlers in this list because they are extremely broken right now. Well anyway guys, if you guys enjoyed that ranking video, I highly recommend you go check out this ranking video right here.